Hey y'all, Kurt Chan here from the Autodesk CAM team, and today we're going to be taking a look at the fundamentals of PowerMill, which is the setup. Just a quick reminder to change your units, go under Options, Application Options, Unit System, and this is where you can change it from Metric to Imperial. Also, keep in mind that everything you import into PowerMill will be converted over to surface bodies. So if you import geometry with missing faces or need repair, one tool I do like to use is Fusion 360. Within Fusion, I can easily patch surfaces, stitch everything back together, ensuring that it's a watertight solid, and then from there, go ahead and export back over to PowerMill, ready for programming. Now, if you're looking for parts to get practice on, I'm a big fan of Titans of CNC's Academy. He has great learning material ranging from 2.5 axis all the way to 5 axis, providing the parts as well as the drawings and the setup sheets. Definitely check it out. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. First things first, you always start with the setup. Now once that dialog box launches, what you'll see is five options. The work plane, stock, clamps, toolpaths, and notes. I like to start with clamps because this is where I can actually designate my work holding. If you download those files from your work holding provider, from there you just bring them right in and now you're gonna have your fixture already positioned ready to go, and you can designate those during the collision detection. If the colors of your parts and work holding don't come across, all you have to do is just change the shading. So you can just turn on the multicolor shading on the right-hand side of the menu, and that will activate all the colors that came over. As well as, you can see there's now two levels, one for the part, as well as one for your work holding, and you can turn that on or off throughout this process. From here, let's go ahead and define our stock. All we have to do is go back and edit the setup under settings, pick the stock option, and now we have all the typical ones you can work with, whether it's a box, if you want to import a mesh, or leverage a cylinder, because technically looking at this part, you can tell that it probably will come out of a, a cylindrical piece of stock. Now something to keep in mind too is that sometimes when you import a model, your Z might not always be in the correct direction. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen is that Y is actually technically where Z should be. So from here I'm going to go ahead and place a work plane but I can still edit where my X, Y, and Z will be. One of my favorite options when you edit a work plane is something called swap axes. Now to act to get to this what you want to do is hit the little edit icon under the work plane now this will activate the different options you can have to manipulate the actual work plane. So swap axes will say, hey, what direction do I want my Z to be? And then now where do I want my X and Y to be located at, right? Once we hit accept, we can go back in, back to the stock, recalculate, and it places exactly how we want things to look. We're of course going to have to add some additional material around the model, and this is where the limits come into play, where you can change the length, and once you say, I'm gonna designate it as four inches long, you could always lock that in and then add stock at the top or the bottom, which is you know your min or your max. And then from here now, we will create our G54 reference. So we can go back in and create a new work plane. And that's the beauty about work planes is that you can have as many work planes as you want as references. So once you put the new reference in, because you I want the G54 at the very top center of the stock, the key here is that the stock won't be based off of this G54 work plane. It's actually based off of the first work plane that we actually created, because that's what we use as a reference. That's a very key point here is that you can have your stock based off of one work plane and then your G54 based off another work plane. So when you actually go in under the stock, under coordinate system, it's super important to pick the named work plane you want your stock to be based off of, which was the first work plane I created. This is extremely important because I can have 15 different work plane references, but I always want my stock to be referenced off of the initial work plane I started with, and then I can have G54 as one work plane, G55 as another work plane, so forth and so forth. Now, here are some additional tips in positioning work planes. When you go ahead and create a new work plane, which you just go back to the setup, 
create a work plane. You can pick a work plane as a point. And when you actually place that location and you edit that work plane, keep in mind is now you can always swap it axis, which we've been doing, but then two, right to the right is something called a line. Now the beautiful part about a line is I can actually align it to the view that I'm looking at, normal to the view, so now the tool will come in that Z direction. Or if I pick under line to geometry, it's now gonna align the Z normal to any face I move my cursor over, which is nice. And then lastly, geometry reposition will actually move the initial work plane, whether I use the point or off of a, a setup location and move it anywhere I want across the model. Now, if I go ahead and activate that work plane, that's the direction to where the tool will come at based off of that Z direction. So this is great and really simple for positional machining. One thing to keep in mind though, is that when you're actually creating these work planes, as you can see at the very bottom, the Z axis is a predominant axis. So meaning that if you go ahead and create a new work plane, it would always be in that Z direction as normal too. If I click the Y icon, when I go ahead and create a new work plane, now the Y axis will now be normal to any face you're working with. With that said, we covered a lot. Hopefully you guys learned something new about working with the setup and the process of going through from work plane to stock to now your clamps. If you're looking for more topics to dive deeper into, please let us know in the comments below and hopefully you walked away on learning something new today. Thanks again for watching, guys.